Hello, hello. Hello, hello. This is Father Adam greeting you with good news that I know you can use in your daily life. I'm here in Poland visiting my grandmother, spending time with her. And it is clear to me that she is quickly declining. Just last year, she was able to go with me into the town. We were able to hold hands and walk around and spend time together. She's no longer able to do that. She is quickly declining due to the dialysis she has once a week. Her kidneys are in bad shape. Her diabetes, her heart. And she says, I'm weaker and weaker every day. And so I expressed to her my fear that she will soon die, especially after we visited the cemetery where my grandfather is buried in our town. And she said there, I will soon join you, she said to him. That filled me with a lot of fear. And I said to her, I don't want you to die. I don't want you to leave me. Do not leave me, I said. You're the one person in my life that has never left me, ever. Hmm? Don't leave me. And she looks at me and she says, I will never leave you. I will always be with you. Hmm? I will always be with you. You will never be alone, she said. Such comforting words. What a promise from my grandmother. It is the same promise that this Sunday we hear from our Lord Jesus Christ, who at the Last Supper says to the concerned, fear-filled, trembling disciples, I will never leave you. You will never be left orphans. I'm leaving you the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, that will be with you always. Your Consoler, the one to console you, to make sure you know always that you are never alone. You never walk alone in this life, ever. God always walks with you. You only walk alone if you want to. You can only be left orphan if you want to be left orphan. Mm-hmm. If you choose to be left orphan. If you choose to be by yourself. How many people choose to be by themselves? Mm-hmm. Instead of getting themselves into a community choir. To be in community. Because heaven is community. Hell is isolation. Hey, hell is loneliness. You will never meet anybody in hell. <laughs> I didn't say there's nobody in hell because there's lots of people in hell. But you will never meet anyone in hell. Hell is isolation. Hell is loneliness. Get yourself into a community. The word church means assembly. Jesus said where two or three are gathered in my name, not necessarily in a in a building that we call church. Church is a community, a gathering of people. You can have that in a dance group. There's lots of dance classes where you can meet people. Huh? Here in Poland, there's these senior clubs where Seniors go and meet one another so that they're not by themselves. So often I walk into a Starbucks in the United States and I see all these people on their computers. <laughs> Why? Or on, or they're just sitting there. Why? Because they can't use the computer at home? 
No, because they want to be around people. Hmm? If there's one thing we can learn from the whole pandemic experience, it's how loneliness, isolation kills. How many people were killed? through the pandemic, not because of the virus, but because of the depression, the anxiety that set in from the loneliness and isolation. I'll never forget this one lady who told me that her son invited her to Easter dinner <laughs> through Zoom. And he said, mom, you're only getting 40 minutes. So um, this better be quick. This better be a quick dinner. <laughs> this is what we're doing to each other. We're killing each other. Technology is killing people. Facebook is killing people. Mm -hmm. The internet is killing people. Destroying and killing marriages. Mm -hmm. We need one another. We need community. And being in community is not easy. You think it's easy to be here visiting my family with my drunk uncle? <laughs> or remember, with family, we only come out well in photos. But what would I be without them? How wonderful it is to have them. It's so wonderful to have a family that even God wanted to have a family. That's why God came among us being coming part of a family. And God doesn't want you to be by yourself. And the only way to experience that is by having people in your life. Not perfect people, because there are no perfect people. There's only human beings, not perfect beings. God didn't make perfect beings, only human beings. And the people around you are not perfect. And you know why you should put up with them? Because they put up with you. And it's not easy. <laughs> it ain't easy. Hmm? But we need people in our life. We need community to experience that sensation that we are never alone. If you feel that you are orphaned, it's because you want to feel that way. Because you ain't doing anything to get out of it. Huh? Instead of wasting your time on the internet, scrolling through Facebook reels and feeds and TikToks and whatever else, do a profile. Find yourself a suitable partner because God doesn't want you to be by yourself. Isn't that what he said? In the first book of the Bible, God made Eve for Adam and declared, it is not good for the human being to be alone. Now, the opposite of not good is good. So it's good to be with people. Hmm? We need community to have that sense that we are not alone, that we never walk alone. Jesus said, I will not leave you orphan. And so he organized a community. Even so, he organized a community so he wouldn't walk alone. He didn't want to walk by himself, and yet he could. That's why he chose 12 folks, 12 misfits that abandoned him betrayed him, Judas sold him, Peter denied him. Hmm? And yet Jesus knew what they were going to do, but he did not want to walk by himself. That sensation, that feeling in us of, I, I don't want to be abandoned. I don't want to be left behind. You have not been left behind. The whole experience of Holy Mass is the presence of God in our life. That God is always with us. Always. At the end of the Gospels, Jesus says, and lo, I am with you always until the end of the age. And how is Jesus with us? Through the church, the community. That's why he says, the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church, the community, the gathering, the assembly. Mm -hmm. I will always be with you. So we gather. Get yourself into a community, into a dance club. No, not necessarily a church. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking here about going to church. Because many of you have had really bad experiences with church. 
Hello? <laughs> Me too. Uh, but church is a gathering of people, like what we have here in my family. I've put out all these videos uh, of all the things that we're doing together, picking potatoes and all sorts of stuff that we're doing together. We're being together. Get yourself into a group of people. And God is always with you, always, no matter what it is that you're going through. You are never alone, ever. And you know how I know that? Because I'm with you and I love you. Mwah. That's why I'm taking this time to do this video for you because I know that you need this good news in your life that I know you can use. When my parents were getting a divorce, I stood there on the steps of the house where we lived in Chicago and I begged my father not to leave. I said, don't leave me. Don't leave me. I didn't want him to leave. I didn't want my brother to leave. And yet they got in the car and they left. That sensation. Huh? To not be left behind. The one memory of when I was in Poland growing up was my mother leaving to go to the United States. And I just remember the car taking her away. And I was waiting there at the bottom of the hill where the car took her. I always, I spent my childhood waiting there, looking up because the car took her up the hill. And one day I was joined by Yashu at the bottom of the hill, my best friend here in Poland. And Yashu's mother died of a uh, hemorrhage and they took her in a cart a horse-drawn carriage up the same hill to the cemetery it was winter time so he couldn't go to the funeral of his own mother and he stood there with me he joined me there and i asked him what are you here for and he says i'm waiting for my mom to come back because they took her up that same road and my mother's going to come back he said she will come back. And one day in school, I say to him, how come you didn't join me? Because he didn't join me. I said, why, why didn't you come and join me today? And he says, well, I don't have to wait anymore. My wait is over. My mom came to me in a dream last night and she said that I don't have to wait there at the bottom of the hill because she's always with me. My mom is always with me. The question for you and for me today, as we listen to the gospel reading today, where Jesus says, I will never leave you orphans. You are never alone. I'm leaving you the advocate, the Holy Spirit, the consoler. The question is, is your mama home? Do you feel like your mama is home? Is your mama home? Because God isn't just your... Father, God is also your mother. God doesn't have a gender. God is spirit. God is both our mama and our and our father hmm? and our daddy. Hmm? Is your mama home? Do you feel accompanied? That you are always and always, always with God in your life. And we feel that through the people in our life. I keep repeating that over and over again, that we are all the body of Christ. Hmm? Paul, in his conversion, if you read the Acts of the Apostles, he gets thrown off of whatever he's writing on the road to Damascus, and he's blinded, and Jesus speaks to him, and Jesus says, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Now, who was he persecuting? The Christians, the followers of Jesus. He was killing them. He participated in the killing of uh, Stephen, the first deacon. We know that he was there. The Bible tells us Jesus is equating himself with us. He's got no body other than yours. Hmm? You want to see Jesus? You got to see other people. In his, in his body, we are his body. Hmm? We are his body. We are the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. So in order to experience the body of Christ, we have to have bodies around. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
You know, it used to be when I was growing up here in Poland that every single priest had a housekeeper. Now, why would priests have housekeepers? It was mandatory. Of course, they couldn't be good looking women or anything like that. They'd have to be these so that people wouldn't talk. <laughs> you know how it is. Uh, and uh, why? Because they couldn't cook or clean? No, it was for company. Hmm? It's for company. Because it's not good for people to be by themselves. People get themselves in trouble when they're by themselves. Hmm? People ask me, uh, Father Adam, you know, when am I my truest self? How do I discover my who I really am? Well, when you're by yourself at night. Who are you? Hmm? Who are you then? Hmm? By yourself. When you're by yourself. Hmm? When is it that people get themselves in the most trouble? When they're by themselves. Hmm? Isn't it? In loneliness, people go to the casino. I know that because uh, I live all around that in Las Vegas. You walk in there and there's all these people by themselves. Hmm? Smoking in front of the machine with the, <laughs> with the oxygen tank. Uh, killing their loneliness. Hmm? And when the people walk into a casino, the first thing they say is, I gotta find my machine! I gotta find my machine! Because they have a relationship with the machine. I know one of the producers of these machines and in Vegas, they, he produces the machines and he says the main objective of producing one of these machines is uh, to make sure that a person is drawn in, that they have a relationship with the machine. So they don't have a relationship with Jesus and with other people. They have a relationship with a machine. So they walk in and they want to go to their machine. Hmm? They get sucked in. Loneliness does that to people. Huh? People get themselves into trouble in loneliness. Going to nightclubs, the hookup culture that we are in right now, people looking for hookups huh? to kill their loneliness. Pornography, hello. Huh? When do people do that? Huh? With other people? I don't think so. At least I haven't heard. They do it by themselves huh? in their loneliness. Hmm? People get themselves into deep trouble. They get themselves into alcoholism. Mm -hmm. They cheat on their spouse in their loneliness because they feel abandoned. The spouse doesn't talk. Oh, I just was talking with a couple. Uh, and he says, I don't know why my wife cheated on me. I don't understand why she cheated on me. I give her everything. I work. I give her everything. And yet she found somebody on the internet on Messenger, and she's chatting away. And I said, well, you've given her everything except yourself because she feels lonely. You don't talk. You don't open up. Love is openness. Being open. Anybody can give stuff. Anybody can give stuff. Uh, that, you know. So what? That you give somebody something. Huh? What's that? Love is not giving. Love is opening up. That's why I open up, being vulnerable. Mm -hmm. That's what love is. Love is openness. Open yourself up. Mm -hmm. It's not about buying stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, when I uh, first arrived here in Poland, I always, I mean, I prepare my suitcase. I've got my suitcases here. Uh, I bought my grandma her favorite vodka because she loves vodka. And her favorite chocolates and all sorts of stuff. And I want to give it right away to her. You know, the stuff that I bought her in the United States, especially I went to the secondhand store, Goodwill, bought her a bunch of stuff and I want to give it to her right away because I carried it all, all the way from the United States. And she could care less. She could care less about what I brought her. She's touching me all over. You're here. You're here. You're here. Your presence. Your presence. And I have that fear in me right now. And I'm sharing this with all of you. I think it's a natural fear. I've always experienced it, but I'm experiencing it a lot right now as I'm seeing my grandmother decline. And I'm, I'm sharing my feelings with her. We're both sharing our feelings, the feeling that, you know, she will leave me. 
and she has to reassure me. She's like reassuring me. I will not leave you. You will never be left by yourself. Hmm? I will always be with you. Hmm? And I will always be helping you. I'm always reminded of St. Teresa, the little flower. She said, and she died at the age of uh, 24. And she said, I will spend my heaven doing good on earth. Hmm? Helping. Hmm? The connection. It's the same thing, the Spirit of God with us all the time. That Jesus is with us. Mm -hmm. And if God is with us, who can be against us? You have to take in that good news. That no matter what it is that you are going through right now. Maybe it's cancer. Or what is it? Mm -hmm. Problems in your marriage. You know, you think you have problems, but you don't. Remember, I always say, we don't have problems. We only have situations. And we are walking. Mm -hmm. Walking. I am the way. That's why you got to walk. The truth, in truth, and the life. To get to the life, you need to go, live in truth, and then you ah, suck in the life mm, from Jesus. Mm. Don't we just love Jesus? If you love Jesus, you got to comment and share because sharing is caring. Hello, hello. <laughs> hello, hello. We have to share. Share the good news. So we can all use the good news. No matter what it is that you're going through in your life, Jesus is with you. Every hair in your head is counted. Hmm? Every hair on your head is counted. Hmm? My hair looks really good. Hmm? I have a lot of it. Now that I've, I've beaten my anemia, I was anemic for a long time. I, could, oh. I had anemia for a very, very long time. Various reasons, of course. And uh, um, I beat anemia, and so now my hair's coming back. So it's wonderful. Yeah. So we've all got stuff we're going through, every single one of us. We all have situations, and everything is going to be okay because Jesus is in our life. And how do I know that Jesus is in your life? Because I'm in your life. Huh? I am Jesus' body. You are Jesus' body. We are all the body of Christ. Hmm? We know that so well. This is Christianity. Christianity is an incarnational religion or faith. I don't like to use the word religion because it has bad connotations. Uh, Christianity is incarnational. That God became a human being and he continues to become a human being. For us. Mm. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. That whoever believes in him may have life. John 10.10 10 says that you may have life and have it in abundance. Oh, how wonderful, isn't it? Mm. I love each and every one of you so very much. You have one chance to live this life. Make sure you live it. Make sure you just don't exist. Okay? Mm. Every man is born, but not every man lives. Hmm? You remember that. Hmm? So you have to make the best out of this life. And all will be well. I'm praying for you. Make sure you pray for me. Let's say a little prayer together. I've been doing so much praying. And it's so wonderful to be here because I can go to confession all the time. All the time. And believe me, I need it. <laughs> Being with my family. <laughs> Uh, so we we take in our faith and we breathe that spirit. What is faith? Faith is the ability to relax, to know that everything will be well. And so we pray not to change God, but for God to, to give us that strength so that we may be changed. Mm. And I pray for that. For that strength in order to not change those around me, but to change me. To be the change that we want to see. And to take in that presence, that eternal presence, that breath. You know, they couldn't breathe. The apostles couldn't breathe. They were in the upper room and they were all afraid. They can't breathe because they're afraid of the Jews, the Bible says. It means they're afraid of people because people do terrible things to other people. And they couldn't breathe. And then 
Jesus comes in their midst and what does he do? He does spiritual CPR on them. He breathes on them and says, receive the Holy Spirit. <sighs> Breathe now my breath. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven them and whose sins you retain are retained. In other words, be, be forgiving. Mm? Forgive. Forgive. Mm. Well, some reflections of mine today on this Sunday when we celebrate the Holy Spirit coming upon us. The Holy Spirit is so wonderful. Spirit, that's rua in uh, Hebrew, meaning breath. Mm? So you breathe. The br it's no longer I who live, the Bible says, but Jesus who lives in me. And I can do all things, the Bible says, through him who strengthens me. Mm? Yeah, we... We breathe the breath of God. All will be well. I love you so much. Mm -hmm. Why do I always say I love you? Well, what would you like me to say? And people say, oh, you always say I love you. Well, what would you like me to say? That I don't? I Of course I do. And you need to hear it. If all your life you're going to be hearing negativity, well, you're going to take it in. You got to hear positivity. Psychologists say for every negative thing you have to tell somebody you got to tell them three positive things because people are full of negativity we live in a very negative world such a mm, under the influence of the evil one the one that accuses us mm. so you got to tell people how wonderful they are how good they are how important they are how how well they smell <laughs> how beautiful you are you are very beautiful mm -hmm. So many people don't feel they're beautiful. They they feel like there's something wrong with them. There's nothing wrong with you. Mm? Nothing wrong with you. You are loved, and I know that because I love you. Mm? So God bless you. Have a beautiful, beautiful Sunday. I hope you're waking up to this good news that I know you can use. We're never alone. God is always with us. And how do we know that? Because of the people in our life. God bless you.